When I was a child, my father did two tours in Vietnam. Vietnam was a mysterious place that I had only associated with war. So when I went to Saigon this year, I wanted to view it through a different lens. At first, of course, I thought I would view it through the lens of fountain pens. But I only found one Vietnamese fountain pen, which I'll cover later in this video. But hey, I love coffee in cafes. So this video is about Saigon places to get caffeinated in one fountain pen. The cafe apartments house several of the shops that young people like to go to. Like many buildings in Saigon, you have to find an unmarked door to go down a dark hallway and up some dark stairs to find your store. Since Boo posted pictures with celebrities in the hallway, we'll start with them. Boo's was definitely a young person's place. It had a little fake flower spot to take IG pictures, outdoor seating, and some excellent iced coffee in a kind of a plastic boba cup. In the same building was Hanoi Day. They are supposed to serve Hanoi style coffee and they only served iced coffee. A lone guy behind the counter eating his lunch made my drink by shaking it up in a cocktail shaker. It was unbelievably delicious, almost like chocolate. I think a lot of the coffee shops here in the cafe apartments are for young people to meet up together at nighttime. Next up is a tea shop, Orient Tea. They have an assortment of Asian tea and Chinese cakes and beautiful Asian decor and a clean and relaxing quiet place. This was one of my favorite shops. I had Osmanthus tea and pumpkin cakes. Here is where I tested out my only Vietnamese pen, the DM70. DM70 comes in both blue and pink, which makes me think it's for children for school. It cost a little less than $3 and was actually a pretty good pen after I fiddled with the nib a little bit. And it has a solid, sturdy converter. I also got a bottle of fountain pen ink called Bisner. It was the only Vietnamese ink I could find. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Thinker and Dreamer is up next. It was kind of a hip, Pinterest kind of place where on the menu they had icons for what tasted the best or what took better pictures for Instagram. I got something called the Tokyo which is like an affogato where you pour a hot espresso over ice cream cubes. It was delicious and several people stopped by my table to ask me what I was drinking. I'm still in the cafe apartments and by this time I'm getting overly caffeinated. So Saigon Oi to the rescue, where I got red rice tea that's not caffeinated. Saigon Oi had a nice relaxed feel to it. They were playing Vietnamese pop music. And after a while, a lot of students came in and studied. A couple of them told me that you could sit around pretty much well all day off of one cup of coffee and study. I'm still in the Cafe Apartments building, which is on Wim Way Walking Street in downtown Ho Chi Minh City. And the last place we're going to go to in the cafe apartments is Party. It is a tea parlor where first you need to take your shoes off before you enter. It's a kind of frilly girly place where first you pick your tea after smelling various kinds of tea and then you pick the cup that you'd like to have it served in. Here you can see these customers without their shoes on picking out their tea. I got a pot of Earl Grey and scones with cream. The scones were warm and yummy and it was a nice, quiet place to relax. Now we're gonna leave the cafe apartments and get on the road where just about everyone's on a motorcycle and head out toward the airport. Our destination is the Da Mien Garden Cafe. The Garden Cafe is a nice green place that is full of waterfalls, fountains, and misters. It's a nice respite from the noisy, crowded road outside. Though it's chock full of Instagrammable spots like the year 2019 in front of a bunch of AstroTurf, a hallway of twinkle lights that doesn't really go anywhere, and loads of plastic flowers lashed onto trees. But it has this really cool kind of round tree house that's built around, I think, a banyan tree, and lots of open air seating. Everybody smokes on the outside seats, 
There are a few select indoor seats that are non-smoking, but it's much more pleasant to sit outside. It's a giant cafe with a very well-run staff and some interesting food. Here's a milk tea with all kinds of jellies in it. Thin coffee, which I've come to believe is liquid black gold. It's mixed with sweetened condensed milk, which sounds kind of gross, but the coffee is just so strong and bitter that the sweet condensed milk really balances it and it kind of tastes like dark chocolate. And then I got this plate of fries, which came with sugar and butter. It strangely tasted pretty good. You can also get just regular food like uh, pho, noodle soups, and sandwiches. The Garden Cafe is very popular. It was busy even during the off time I was there. Even though it can be a bit kitschy, I really enjoyed it there. I think it's worth the trip out to the airport for. Now we're going to go back into town to across the street from the Batexco Tower and back down into a long dark hallway and up a dark stairwell to the Villa Royale downtown tea room. It's a high ceilinged open and airy tea room chock full of antiques and chandeliers. It's a more upscale place and there seems to be a lot of expats here. They have an excellent selection of tea and really nice teaware. Here in my teapot is French Earl Grey. They also have a nice selection of salads, lunch items, and delicious desserts. This is a passion fruit cake with sour cream frosting. Now we're going to go to across the street from the Opera House to Lucine. This is the view from the second floor cafe, which of course you had to get to down a dark hallway. This one lined with motorcycles and up some dark stairs. Their Finn coffee makes it worth it. Freshly brewed. This one already has a sweetened condensed milk on the bottom. Mix it up and all is good. It's a full up cafe so it has sandwiches and meals and other drinks like this coconut water. Their banh mi was excellent and you can't beat the view. Time now for an ink break. I could only find one kind of fountain pen ink in Vietnam that was made in Vietnam called Bisner. It's a bright, hard blue that washes up easily and is not water resistant. Now I can't beat inky rocks without slopping around some ink. Well that was satisfying. The next place we're going to has branches all over Saigon. It's where most tourists buy their coffee, Trun Nguyen Legend. Where you can purchase this whole thin coffee set to make your own thin coffee at home. You can buy complete coffee kits that include the beans, but they're a little on the expensive side. You can make your own thin pour over iced coffee or enjoy a frou frou drink like this ginger laced iced coffee. Chun Wen's coffee was recommended by my cooking class chef. The last place was my favorite. You enter a doorway flanked by two statues and of course go down a long dark hallway lined with motorcycles and then of course go up the stairs all the stairs all the way to the top and then you enter the workshop a bright open large modern area that looks kind of steampunk they're pretty serious about their coffee they have three types that you can get iced pour over and immersion it's a complicated menu. If you choose immersion, then you have to choose the style of either French press, AeroPress, or Siphon for your coffee. If you choose pour over, you have to choose between Kalista, Con, Woodneck, Chemex, and V60. When you do choose your beans, you get to keep the card that explains a little bit about where the bean came from and what it tastes like. My favorite was this iced coffee that was mixed with soda water. This was a pretty hipster place that looked like it was a mix of expats, tourists, and some locals. I thoroughly enjoyed the vibe and I respect the thoroughness and their expertise on coffee. 
I thoroughly enjoyed my caffeine-soaked foray into Saigon or Ho Chi Minh City. What I came away from this is that everyone was kind, they were young, caffeinated up to the eyeballs, and rode motorcycles.